I'm Jason Rolland, uh, VP of Materials at Carbon. We have a booth where we're showing off our M1 printer, uh, which is our first commercial printer, uh, along with uh, a number of resins and new materials that we're providing, uh, ranging from our elastomeric materials, our high temperature materials, and our rigid polyurethane and flexible polyurethane resins. So the M1 printer um, works on similar principles as a stereolithography printer. Uh, but the difference is that in the base of our cassette, we have a very special window. This window is transparent to UV light, but it's also permeable to oxygen. And so what that does, oxygen quenches the polymerization at a very thin layer of the interface in between the growing part and the window. And so that allows you to do two things. One, it allows you to print very, very fast um, at 10 to 100 times faster, depending on the object. The second thing that allows you to do is to print with very delicate and gentle materials. And some materials that might be delicate in the green state, such as elastomers, that might get destroyed in a traditional SLA process where you're peeling away or wiping with a blade. Over the past two years, my team has been working on developing our first seven resins, which we're displaying in our booth today. And so one of the unique things that we do, again, going back to that special process, uh, we're able to do, use uh, reactive resins, so resins that have a, a, a limited working time. And so limited meaning around 12 hours, uh, our working time. But when you have a fast printer, uh, that doesn't matter. So all of our prints are well within that working time. And so that expands our range of chemistries that are available. So we can uh, do things like blending UV curable chemistries with thermally curable chemistries. And that makes the scope of, of mechanical properties and thermal properties that one can access much broader than in a traditional SLA. So you'll see in our booth, we have resins ranging from soft and really durable stretchy elastomers to high temperature resins uh, suitable for aerospace and automotive applications. We have very tough, high impact strength, rigid polyurethanes and flexible poly urethane resins, and it's a much bigger uh, universe of properties we can get into. So we went with the subscription model because um, we want to future-proof our customers. We don't want them to have a printer that is obsolete after a year or two years. And by having an internet-connected device like our printer is, based on a subscription model, the customer constantly gets software upgrades that can turn on new features. And so you're, uh, you're, the printer is continually getting better and smarter, and the, the customer is getting better and better prints coming out of it. It also makes things like adding, introducing new resins um, very straightforward. You just do a software upgrade, and all of a sudden you've turned on all of these new resins that are available. So I definitely think there are, uh, there are plans for a larger machine uh, in the works. Um, more materials for sure. Uh, we have our base set of seven resins and what we'll probably be doing is expanding uh, our scope of what we call functional prototyping resins. In other, in other words, resins that can be used in the final part. Um, we're also beginning to go way deep on some verticals uh, in the automotive and footwear space and in uh, dental as well. So we'll be doing that where we're now moving out of functional prototyping and into manufacturing and using the printer and the materials to manufacture final parts.